Hey everybody, so today we're going to be learning Chapter 4, Lesson 3, Multiplying Fractions. So just a little reminder on what we did in Lesson 1 and 2. In Lesson 1, we were estimating. What we were estimating was how to multiply a fraction times a whole number, multiply a fraction times a fraction, and how to multiply a mixed number times a mixed number. But in all of those, we were estimating. So then in Lesson 2, we learned how to solve to multiply a fraction times a whole number, and today we're learning to multiply fractions, okay? So instead of estimating, we're solving. So um, let's start with our first example, and this is going to look really familiar to you, and it may be pretty easy for some of you. So first we're going to start with an area model. So right here I wrote down use a model and make sure your notes look exactly like mine so you should have your questions column and the notes column. So we're going to find one half times three fifths. Okay, so that's what we're going to be multiplying this fraction times this fraction and we're going to use an area model to do it. I'm going to rewrite that here. So I have one half times three fifths. And um, I'm going to draw a couple area models first. So first I want to show what one half looks like, and then I want to show what three fifths look like. So I'm going to make brownie pans. Okay, so here I have two brownie pans. One is going to show the one half, and one is going to show the three fifths. Okay, but I have to keep something in mind. One of the pans is only going to have this kind of bars in it, and the other brownie pan is only going to have this kind of bars in it. Okay, so for one half, I'm only going to draw this kind of bars, and for three-fifths, I'm only going to draw these kind of bars, okay? So, that's one half. So I divided it into two because my denominator is a two, so I knew I had to have two sections in this brownie pan, okay? The three-fifths, my denominator is five, so I, need a, I know I need to have five different sections in this pan. Okay, and I'm again, I'm going to use these kind of bars to separate what I need to. So here I have five different sections, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I'm going to do my shading in. And as I'm shading in, I'm going to shade in um, the different kind of frosting that I have. So remember, these are brownie pans. That's why my shading in is the frosting. So I'm going to shade in one of the sections because my numerator tells me to only shade in one. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to shade in three parts because my numerator tells me to shade in three. Two and three. Okay, so here I have one, two, three out of five, so three-fifths, and here I have one out of two, so one-half. Okay, now I need to put those together. So I'm essentially putting my brownie pans together. So I need to make sure that I have the one half. Okay. I have my pink frosting. And then I need to draw my three fifths. Okay. 
Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five sections. And I need to shade that in with my blue frosting. Okay, so now the part that has double frosting is going to be this right here. So this section has double frosting, right? Has the blue frosting and it has the pink frosting. So that's one, two, three. It's three sections out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's three out of ten sections that have double frosting. So what we just did there was multiply one half times three fifths, but we use an area model for it. Okay, so if you want to use an area model um, for future uh, multiplying fractions problems, please um, do so like this. So make sure that you draw the bars one way for one of the fractions and another way for the other fractions. Okay, um, and then if we did, now we're going to use. We're going to learn a different strategy now. Instead of using an area model, we're going to use an equation. Okay, so let's use the same exact um, problem, but this time we're just going to use an equation to solve it. So one half times three-fifths. So when we're using an equation, what we're going to do is multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to do what I said. So I'm going to multiply the numerators. So I'm going to multiply one times three. And I'm going to multiply the denominators. So two times five. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply everything through. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 5 is 10. So here I got the same answer. I use my equation to solve 1 half times 3 fifths. Here I use an area model, and I came up with the same thing. Okay, so here I did the same thing. I'm just using um, an example, a model, show my work. Let's try one more. So let's solve one fourth times one third. Okay, so what I have to do is multiply the numerators. So one times one numerators. Now I'm going to multiply the denominators. So four times three. Okay. I'm going to do my multiplication. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 3 is 12. So this is example 1. And example 2. Okay. We're going to move on to our third strategy of today, which is still multiplying fractions, but first we're going to simplify, then we're going to multiply. Okay. So again, we're going to simplify first, then we're going to multiply. Okay, let's use um, this example. So 4 ninths times 18. And I'm going to just draw a little squiggly so we know we're doing something separate here. Okay, so 4 ninths times 18. Like we were saying in the previous lesson in lesson 2, every whole number has a 1 as its denominator. So I'm going to change this 
So I now have 4 ninths times 18 over 1. Okay? Now, I'm going to do what I did above here and multiply the numerator and then multiply the denominator. But before I actually multiply, I'm going to do one more step. So I'm just going to change how it looks for right now. Multiplying the numerator, then I multiply the denominator. Okay? Now I'm going to do the tricky step which is to simplify. So here I see two numbers, 18 from the top, 9 from the bottom, that have a number in common. So they both have the number 9 in common. This means I could simplify them. So 9 goes into 9 one time. Okay, so I'm dividing. 9 divided by 9 is 1. Then I'm going to divide 18 divided by 2, that's 2. Another way to do this is to think how many times does 9 go into 18? That's 2 times. So again, I'm going to change how it looks. So now I have 4 times 2 over 1 times 1. Okay, so I made sure to simplify this first, and then now I can multiply. Four times two is eight, one times one is one, so eight over one is the same as eight. Okay, so this might be the tricky one, but it's really gonna help you to simplify first. Let's try one more, and this is from your textbook, the got it problem, okay? We're gonna try got it problem E. And that'll be on page 275. So, sorry. So, got it, problem E, page 275. Okay. And that problem is 5, 6 times 9 tenths. Okay. So, again, I'm going to multiply across or multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Okay, so before I'm actually going to multiply though, I'm going to simplify. So I see that 5 and 10 have a number in common. They have 5 in common. So how many times does 5 go into 5? One time. How many times does 5 go into 10? Two times. So, should I move on? I don't think so. I can still multiply 6 and 9. So with a different marker, 6 and 9 have a number in common. They have the number 3 in common. So 3 goes into 6 two times. And 3 goes into 9 three times. So now I can rewrite everything. It's all simplified. So 1 times 3 over 2 times 2. Okay, I'm going to multiply everything through. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. So my final answer, 3 fourths. Okay. Try the other got it problems in your math book.